talked about. And that is, you know, the idea of being able to get your automation system installed. Uh, there's companies, and particularly Open Symmetry, who's are going to be our leading our discussion here, uh, is you know the idea that you, it's helpful to have somebody guide you through the process. In other words, how to select a, an SPM product, and then how to get it installed, and how to get it adopted, and work through all the uh, wrinkles that are associated with that. So with us today is Misha Bale, and she's the total reward manager for DSM, big big company. And Andy Mills, he's an account ma a director for Open Symmetry, and they're going to give us sort of their bird's eye view of what that experience is like. And so let me tell you how to do some active listening and be ready to write some questions for them. The active listening is, okay, how does that work? Why is that a benefit? How can that improve what I'm trying to do? And remember our opening commentary, we can have great designs, but if we can't administer the compensation program, we're gonna be struggling. So over the next uh, 20 plus minutes, we're gonna get a chance to hear uh, some insight from Misha about how she approached this issue and partnered with Open Symmetry. And with that, let's uh, let's bring our uh, speakers on. Thank you very much there, David. Thank you very much for the introduction. Some great content up to now, and hopefully we can continue. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Andy Mills, and um, we hope you enjoyed today's presentation. Uh, I'm an account director, as David said there. I've been at Open Symmetry since 2009. Um, prior to that, I was at HSBC, where I was an uh, SPM customer, like a lot of people in the audience today. So without further ado, it's great to be here and looking forward to today's session. So Misha, if you could kindly introduce yourself, thank you. Yes, hi, hello everyone, I'm Misha Bale. Um, I'm a total global, re of, I'm a total rewards manager in DSM, and it's uh, great to be in this conference. I'm hearing a lot of interesting stuff and hearing a lot of great things. I'm residing in the Netherlands, which is also where DSM is head office. And I've, I've, as you can see on screen, I've always worked in P&O, uh, of which the last 12 years around that in, uh, in total rewards and global mobility. And since last two years, I'm focusing on sales compensation, which is really my new passion today. So that's why I'm also here today. Thank you, Misha. And so before we actually jump into this session, just a brief introduction to our companies. Uh, so for those of you that have not never heard of Open Symmetry, uh, we are a global consultancy that have been in the SPM space now since 2004. Um, and like KFC, we specialize in one thing, and our speciality is sales performance management. Now, we are an, a, an agnostic company, meaning that we support all the major technologies in the space and some of the new ones that have just come into the market too. And typically, uh, the offerings we provide can be split into three buckets, being strategic offerings, um, deployment services, and managed, uh, managed services also. We've got offices headquartered in Austin, Texas, in the US. And uh, we've also got offices in the UK and across India. We've additionally resources across Canada, APAC, um, Europe, things like that. So we're a truly global company. So Misha, if you, without further ado, if you could introduce DSM, please. Yeah, it's always great to talk about your own company. Um, DSM is a, is a global company as well, and we're specializing in health, nutrition, and sustainable living. And we are committed to creating brighter lives for all. Well, what does that mean? That means that our products and solutions should not only benefit our customers, as they should, of course, but simultaneously, we also want to make the world a bit, little bit of a better place with our products and, uh, and answer some of the great challenges the world is facing today. So like, for example, how do we feed our growing population in the world? Or how do we keep everybody happy and healthy? Uh, how do we tackle climate change, but also how do we enable a bio-based -based circular economy? And let me just give you some examples out, out of our large portfolio of products. Uh, if we look at our specialty materials uh, organization, they are creating uh, high performing materials, plastics that go into cars and that replace uh, metal particles in there and that make cars lighter weight and therefore reduce emission. Um, but if you look at our personal care business, they make the UV blockers that you put on your skin and that protect you from the sun. Um, I think we're also the one of the biggest uh, world's uh, vitamin and micronutrients producer, and particularly in times of COVID, where we all want to boost our immunity system. This is really important. Um, but also just things like um, uh, plant-based and, and even fish substitutes that we're working on today, 
or um, one of our largest uh, and, and most recent innovations is uh, a, a component or a, an ingredient that goes into cow food and that reduces uh, emission from um, uh, cow poop, basically, with at least 30%. Um, and I, I guess what I'm particularly proud of is also our partnership with the United Nations World Food Program, where we uh, provide our um, knowledge and our innovation and our products to fortify uh, food and to fight malnutrition. Um, and since this is a uh, a compensation uh, conference and people love numbers. I also have some numbers for you. Um, we are a global company with over 8 billion of sales. We are in 50 countries um, where we also have our uh, salespeople and um, guys and girls, um, as I've seen in chat before. 80% uh, of our sales comes from nutrition, 43% uh, from high growth economies. And we are highly innovative, which means that around 20% of our sales come from products that we have launched over the last five years. Um, uh, 23,000 employees, so really big company. And after 15 years being with them, still never a dull moment uh, in my life. So um, really a great place to work. Thank you, Misha, some very good information there. Okay, so moving on to today's session. Um, uh, DSM very recently embarked on a fast-moving transformation project and we believe at Open Symmetry that all customers, irrespective of whether you currently reside on a homegrown solution or maybe you've got one of the market-leading solutions, we believe that DSM's recent journey offers some useful insights for everybody where they will be able to take away information that we'll present on today's session to assess their current own SPM solutions that they have. So today, we're going to be seeing how DSM adopted a bow tie approach to make key decisions and ensure they stood the best chance of success when adopting uh, their best fit SPM solution. And some of the information you can see on screen here. So to set the scene on this, um, it was about it became apparent that they would also not be renewing and they would need to be moving off that platform. There was only 13 weeks until they, they they were fully switched off, basically, off that platform. And so, Misha, is it possible you can actually tell us from being put in the position straight out of a horror movie, uh, what challenges did that present to DSM? Yeah, yeah, sure, of course. And, and I think one of the, the first challenges that everybody will recognize is the fact of time, because I think the worst time to replace your SPM tool or to engage in a, in, a, in a new selection process is if it's just before Christmas, because then everybody will want to calculate their 2020 bonuses and you want to get ready for the new performance year. So so that first really was our biggest challenge, the, the short and narrow timing and the timing in the year. Um, but secondly, also the potential absence of technology is a, was a major hurdle because um, if we process bonus payouts from our commercial data, we are processing massive amounts of commercial data that don't go into spreadsheets and Excels because they're just simply too big. And um, so being possibly without a technology to support you with that would mean massive amounts of manual work, uh, human intervention to get that right. And we can still vividly remember the time before we had optimized, which was in 2018, when we were still sending around Excel spreadsheets and checking and chasing and a lot of errors and issues, no order trails. Um, and we certainly want to, did not want to get back into that firefighting mode is where we had to do a lot of manual work. Um, and, and, and lastly, um, on top of that, uh, we had just gone through a, a, a quite big restructuring in DSM in 2020 that resulted in a, a total redesign of our uh, sales compensation plan with different measures, different KPIs, but also different sales roles we had identified on the plan. Um, so adding these three together, a short in time, around Christmas, uh, no technology available uh, as of January 1st, um, and having to implement an, a brand new compensation uh, program, yeah, that was a, a big challenge that we were facing. And that's where we asked the help of, of, of Open Symmetry to help us with their expertise, with their structural approach, but also just giving us hands to help us work because we are just 
a small compensation department uh, and the comp specialists, you can count on one, one hand, one finger even. Um, so yeah, that's when we engaged in what we call the mission impossible as a challenge. Uh, and also some people in DSM <laughs> joked about it that way. Um, but we did have a very clear ambition and we did have a very clear objective, which was a, as smooth as possible transition. And I on purposely say as smooth as possible, because you know that with such a transition, you are going to have hiccups. You're going to have always things that you don't foresee. Um, but simultaneously, as we were embarking on that journey, we also set ourselves the objective, and which is more of a long-term objective, to also make sure that with this new SPM tool in place that we are going to select and implement, we were also setting ourselves up for future success and bringing sales performance management and DSM to the next level. Thank you very much, Misha. So challenge was probably an understatement, I believe, eh? when we started there, wasn't it, really? Yeah, it's always good to look back afterwards. But at that moment, <laughs> certainly we had some stomach in uh, some moments. Indeed, yes. indeed. Okay, so thanks very much. So it was uh, it was one of the initial meetings between DSM and Open Symmetry where we introduced DSM to the bow tie and the bow tie approach that you see on screen here. And I'm very sorry to the audience if you were expecting as to actually present a, a garment of clothing that would solve all the problems. But instead, it's actually what you see on screen. It's a proven SPM methodology that OS have been using to guide customers through challenges similar to what DSM were, were experiencing. And it's done so to enable them to have the best chance of success and to adopt the best fit solution that they can possibly have. And before we actually go into understanding how DSM used this to their advantage and to address their challenges, just want to take a moment to actually um, explain why us at Open Symmetry believe that irrespective of your challenges and your deadlines, that this is the full spectrum approach that we believe is the best fit in every occasion. So all good projects uh, that you see, they're all going to have solid, they all should have solid plans in place, whether it's building a house or you know planning the wedding, something like that. They're all broken down into key tasks and they're all very meticulously planned. And the reason why that's done is because you want to try and guarantee the best chance of success. You, know, you want your dream house, or you want your dream wedding day. And it's the same with SPM solutions, really, where there's a sequential task offered here that's going to give you the best chance of success and adopting the solution that you want, as we said. So to break that down, as we were saying to the buckets, we can see the green tasks here are the strategic tasks that we have to go through before we even get to the orange tasks, which are deploying the solution. And then when you've deployed the solution, it doesn't stop there. There's the blue tasks at the end of the journey, which is post go live support and ongoing uh, change management and uh, improvements and expansions. So we're going to use this journey now to dive into how DSM used it to their advantage. So to start with, DSM were hit with the challenge um, of moving off the platform in the very short time frame. Now, it's common uh, practice when we go into companies where we see the most common thing is to go open Excel or an access database and to dive straight in and to start solving the problems, to create workarounds and to start negatively managing expectations with Salesforce that things are going to be different. And the reason why companies do that is because they want to address you know, the problems, the critical problems straight away. They want to plug the gaps as soon as possible. And that's because they just want to move as quickly as possible. And it comes surprising that at the start of this journey, instead of actually thinking about how you can solve the problems, what we prefer to see companies do is work together and as a company be aligned. And that's what we tried to do with DSM at the start of the journey, whereby we could see there were different stakeholders that initially might have wanted different things. And therefore, it was really important that we performed a make or buy assessment to gain that alignment. So Misha, could you just talk us through for a moment what this assessment did for DSM in this journey, please? Yeah. Yeah, actually, it was also a very big demand of our business stakeholders and where we were tempted to say, well, uh, the one tool is closing down and we need another one and let's just select another one. Uh, there was a big demand of our business stakeholders that basically said, if we look at our IT space and we look at the tools that we have in our uh, sales and commercial organization that already deliver dashboards and metrics and KPIs and performance results. And some of those tools are tools that we have built in house uh, like Tableau, Power BI dashboards, but also SAP, 
sub-tailor-made applications. I think the, the first ask was why are we embarking on a vendor selection process at all and why can't we make our own and integrate that into our existing tools and technology instead of buying a new one from the market. Um, so that's why we asked again the, the, the support of, uh, of Open Symmetry to help us perform a, a make or buy assessment. Um, we are not familiar with the market. We are not familiar with the market in SPMs. Um, so they helped us uh, compose a full analysis that set, it, set the two scenarios of make or buy against each other against a, a numerous uh, number of considerations like what is the cost uh, in the both scenarios? How much time do you need to develop? What's the scope? Uh, but also how do you secure auditability or how is the security of a homemade tool versus one that you buy from the market? Um, but certainly also things like risk assessment and future proofing you know, to be considered. Um, and we just really needed also some input from the market, market practice. Uh, so really a, a fully underpinned uh, um, um, analysis that we had to get fast um, to present our business stakeholders with a real good analysis of why we would want to do the one or the other. And, it's, it soon became apparent that uh, that an external technology would be the best fit, uh, but also provide the best future proofing. And particularly in the in the time squeeze that we were in, where we had resource and time challenge, but it had doing that analysis and taking the time to do that did provide us with the right motivation and the right armed uh, decision making power, staffed with market practice, why we would want to go that area. Uh, and that helped us to convince also our stakeholders and free up the budget as well to uh, to move into the vendor selection process. Thank you very much, Misha. There's some good information there. And so we ne next move on to the next phase. And you could be forgiven once you'd um, gained alignment where you might think, OK, let's jump in and start selecting a solution. Now's the right time. But as you said before, um, it was still mission impossible, even though you were aligned, you still had that challenge that was presented in front of you. And so, as we mentioned before, the common thing to do before a solution is selected that we see companies do is to just jump straight in and want to address their immediate needs. Um, but the problem with taking that approach before you start there is how do you know when you're actually looking at things? How do you know if you're, the tasks that you're performing are critical tasks? How do you know if you're, all the tasks are providing the value? especially with fast approaching deadlines. How do you know you're not working on non-critical things that could be pushed out? So that's the purpose of what we see on, stay on, 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 uh, on the screen here, which is a current state assessment, essentially, which is enabling you to actually get yourselves kind of apply logical thinking and to break things down into more digestible chunks. It's almost like throwing a puzzle up in the air and then picking it up off the floor one by one. And with DSM, what we noticed when we undertook this exercise after alignment and we looked at the current state, you're breaking things down and you could quite clearly see that the critical tasks were, and there were two of them to start with, the automation of pay approvals uh, was the real critical thing that you needed to address straight away. Then there was the goal setting process for the start of the next year and automating that process, which was next critical for you. And if that wasn't addressed, the challenges it would have hit, hit your business with, and you in particular as well, what challenges that would have given you. So by breaking tasks down in that way, we also saw that there were non-critical tasks as well that could be pushed out that uh, you might have thought, well, they need addressing sooner as well. And they were namely the monthly and the annual calculations. And so by taking this approach, you've quite very quickly de delivered and understood a critical path where you can see the different phases and the key dates associated with when you needed things. And you can also appreciate the scope and the use cases that's associated with each. So what we believe is by uh, taking the approaching the challenge in the way that we did through a current state assessment, you guys were able to break things down into a lot more digestible chunks and you could then start actually thinking about how you were actually going to tackle that challenge basically. So then moving on to the next point, we've now, um, after a few weeks of following Bowtie, we have gained alignment across DSM that you want a new solution. You've also established what your critical path needs to look like, the phases, the key dates, and what scope and use cases you're looking to actually provide in there. So now's the right time to actually start choosing a new solution. 
Now, all of this, uh, the main solutions on the market, they can all add two plus two. They all have ways of getting data into the system. They all have reporting tools. They all have process automation tools. So surely you just pick the right solution that hits the right price point and save yourself the time, really. Um, but unbeknown to most, really, is each of the solutions is ever subtly different from each other in the way that it's operated, in the way that it can be set up, and the way that you're going to gain uh, additional value in the future by expanding the solution to other areas of your business. And it's these subtle differences that is important to actually hone in on when you're selecting a new solution and to make sure that you try before you buy and you base it upon uh, the key use cases that matter most to your business. And so, Misha, can you just explain to us how you use these use cases to your advantage when you were selecting a new solution and what it meant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think vendor selection is a key process, but typically also one that takes you a lot of time to to check things out, to learn things, to investigate how your vendors operate, but also just to agree on all the, the nitty gritty details of a contract. And and we had to do that in a, in a period of four weeks of selecting the right one. And you do want to do that right because you engage in a long term long term commitment with your new partner. Uh, so you want to make sure that you select the right one, even though you have to do it fast. Um, so what was really critical to us is to partner here with with Open Symmetry that have their hands on these tools all the time that know our plans, that they knew how DSM's new compensation plan was looking like, they knew how our challenges were, they knew what we needed in our configuration. So they could really help us um, to challenge what we had to look out for, um, what could be the potential best fit for us. Um, but certainly also in our in our demo sessions, uh, we, we agreed up front uh, what are the things that we have to ask, what are the things that we have to look out for uh, to just make sure that you get the best potential match. And what always seems in a demo like, oh, this is great and this is easy and this, is, uh, this would be perfect for us. If you have really the expert opinion here, they will tell you that sometimes the reality might be slightly different if you really know how these tools operate and how they are configured. And so really going in there hand in hand, uh, preparing for the vendor selection, preparing for the, for the, the, the demos and the trying before buying um, really helped us uh, challenge our assumptions, challenge our decisions, and um, so all in all, this was really a valuable process for us to be effective and efficient in selecting the right fan run. Well, in the end, we ended up with Varisant uh, as our current fan. And mm. I'm, I'm really happy with that choice uh, that we made. Indeed, it's the best fit solution as we found when we went through the exercise. So it, it, it did what it, it needed to, basically. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so moving on then, I previously mentioned when I um, walked through the bow tie and what it was that it is open symmetry believe it provides the best chance of success. And at this point here, this is probably where we, we'd like to think that you start seeing the first steps of what success means really. Um, so traditionally, what we see a lot um, of companies do is they would initially decide they want a new um, solution so they'll go out and buy it and at this point when they bought it and they've invested in it they'll start planning how they're going to use it and they'll start planning how they're going to implement it but using Bowtie, you do things the other way around where you do a current state assessment first to understand what matters the most and let that drive your decision into the solution so by taking that approach first and we've arrived at this point now after the solution selected we already have a plan in place a broad plan in place whereby we know all the things I mentioned before. We know the critical uh, phases. We know the key dates. We've almost got the critical path there. And this means that once you've chosen the solution, you can pretty much hit the ground running and start um, delivering You know the, the most critical phases. So in your case, Misha, at DSM, that was automating the approval process. So taking the risk associated with that away. And then once that had been delivered, it was automating the goal setting process. And, and that was done so, I like to think, with minimal fuss. Um, and because it went as smoothly uh, as a result of following the process, that enabled you to actually look at the process and see what improvements could be done based on where it resided in the existing solution. You had that bit more time to actually dedicate it. 
and also being able to dedicate a little bit more time into making sure the end user experience and the adoption of it would be basically the best it could be. So negativity started turning to positivity. And then at the end of this, because things have gone there, it was important that you know we, we've replaced the most of the solution as we have. Um, and we can all be forgiven for thinking, well, high five, that's everything done really. But it was important that we realized that you wanted to continue to get additional value out of the solution in one, two, three years time. And so it was important that you had that robust governance model in place aligned with the roadmap. So thinking about the new initiatives and the new regions since the critical factors have come in, notably the uh, the Brazil region, and I think there is like other things we're working on as well. There. So Misha, I don't know if you could actually explain to us what this meant to yourself specifically when you were going through the process and how this kind of this part of the the journey went for the ascent. Yeah, and I consider us actually totally at the start of our journey. I think we're just five months uh, on our path uh, where we started uh, implementation as contract signature just before Christmas implementation starting in January. So we are just brand new and fresh on our way. Uh, but we have already gone through the most critical steps, which is securing 2020 payout. And we have our target setting in the system and we can calculate in the meantime performance for people. Uh, and, and though it sounds so obvious, um, uh, we often say, think before you run. Um, and, and, and though that sounds very obvious, particularly when you're under time pressure, you tend to just want to start running immediately. Uh, and that's what we deliberately tried not to do. So we really took our time to plan. Uh, we have made uh, huge giant, uh, gun charts of all the activities that had to happen and when, uh, who, uh, getting our team together. Uh, using the bow tie approach, really step by step, chunking our work uh, work into into pieces. So I really think that was part of the key to our success. But but I also certainly want to emphasize that, uh, and that was mentioned by Jeremy as well uh, yesterday, that we also put an enormous amount of efforts into the whole stakeholder management and change management and communication and taking our sales leaders along the process, why we were going to change, what the impact was, but also teaching people how to use and adopt a new tool, how to work with it. Um, and what we have seen, what we are already seeing happening after such a short while, you could say, is that where initially we had a negative, um, um, a negative vibe because people knew what they had um, uh, and we were engaging into something new. Um, we already see it turning into a kind of positive attitude where people see that the new tool is uh, is being more friendly to them, uh, is delivering what they need to have. And um, they also see the, the speed uh, in which we can amend and adapt, um, which was certainly also due to the planning that we had. Um, so that means that even though we are still at the start of our journey, we, we are already starting now to focus ahead um, and look at what are the further enhancements that we want to achieve and um, what are the new entities that we're going to bring on board as well, because that is a, an ask that we have already received that we will focus on for the second half of the year. So, um, yeah, that means that we will continue working with with with, with you guys in Open Symmetry um, to uh, to further develop uh, the proficiency of our tool um, and to uh, engage in next opportunities that we have had. Uh. Indeed, thank you, Misha. So I'm just aware that we're slightly overrunning here, so I'm uh, just going to run up to the, uh, the 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 closings and the takeaways, really. So um, apologies there, guys. Uh, so. Um, looking back, what are the main items to consider on this journey? Well, I think the most important one that I see here is the deadline. Um, and even if it's very short, don't, don't change your approach because essentially that will limit the success that you're going to get. Next, start planning as early as possible. Try to get everybody aligned and on board as soon as possible because you'll reap the rewards later of that. Next, make sure that you try to give equal fo focus to your future state and how you envisage yourself using the solution in one, two, three years time, as much as you can do seeing on the current kind of challenges that you experience. Make sure that you get realistic demos of the solutions. Um, visualize use your use cases in the system rather than just taking generic demos and actually try to actually have a good kind of informed 
um, level of information before you actually start using the solution as to what it looks like for you. And then finally, seek expertise. Uh, learn from others' experiences rather than having to spend the time making your own um, because this can certainly make the process that much more uh, swift for sure. And I'll just wrap it up there because I'm just conscious of the overrun there. So thank Misha, thank you so much for your uh, time and today and your input. It's been really great. I hope everybody who's uh, watched along today had taken something from it. And I know we have a Q&A session later, uh, later on, so we can address any questions then. But in the meantime or afterwards, if anybody would like is keen to learn more about this and our journey and uh, how we can help out, feel free to 